the L3 tuner can give you some interesting looks on the Canon C70, but you should be aware of a few things if you're gonna pair these two. So Module 8 makes three tuners, but this video is just about the L3 on Super 35 RF cameras. At its core, the tuner is a RF to EF adapter, one that has extra elements to give it vintage character that can be dialed up on a scale of one to 10. So what is the character that you get with the L3? I came up with a list of five. First, the bokeh changes. The shape of the bokeh changes, and it gets kind of swirly. It looks a little funky and a little different. The colors change slightly. To me, it seems to get a little bit warmer. Third, it softens the image. The C70 is already kind of a pretty soft camera. It's just soft enough to look kind of filmic in a lot of people's eyes. Personally, I very often find myself adding an unsharp mask effect in post to give the footage a little bit more crispiness um, because it just kind of lacks that clarity that I see with all of my friends' modern Sony cameras. And because the C70 isn't very sharp to start out with, I don't think that the softening from this tuner is a super great match. If you jack the tuner all the way up to 10 on a wide open prime lens, the center frame just gets too soft for my taste. When dialing in a look with the tuner, you can't just look at the scale of one to 10 on the tuner itself. You have to think about both that and your f-stop because those two things together is what is going to determine your look. The vintage character almost disappears at f5 or f8. In this example, if I were to stop down from f1.4 to f2 or 2.8, my eyes would crisp up a lot and the effects of the tuner would be severely diminished, but to the point where I think the sharpness would probably be acceptable. Because just like old vintage lenses that were considered unusable wide open, the L3 tuner's effects are dramatically enhanced exponentially by how open your aperture is. Next, halation. You get some nice warm, bloomy, vintagey highlights like here, keeping the f-stop the same. This is the tuner at one minimum and then maximum at 10. And lastly, the most unique aspect of this tuner, the astigmatism, which kind of pulls the focus into the center of the frame smearing and distorting the edges in a way that would naturally occur in vintage anamorphic lenses. I can toggle between a few examples here to show you what I mean. You can tell on the left side of frame that the spines of these issues are more or less legible. And then if I jack up the tuner from one to 10, they get totally blurry. And that's not depth of field, that's the astigmatism. Even though there's a lot of depth here, the clearance sign and the dumpster are both pretty sharp. But when I change the tuner setting from one to 10, it blurs those edges and kind of makes it look like the dumpster is out of focus. The center is not getting too soft. The astigmatism is just affecting the borders of the frame. To me, it's perceived as having a shallower depth of field because foreground elements get blurred and the mind just kind of thinks that that is out of focus. This could be problematic if you're framing important information or characters on the far sides of the screen, but of course this is a variable tuner so you can dial up and down the intensity based off the needs of your shot. If you're interested in using the L3 with a Super 35 camera like the Komodo or C70, I would say the biggest thing that you should be aware of is that this was not designed for Super 35 cameras. It was designed for full frame mirrorless cameras. Out of all three of Modulate's tuners, I would say the L3 translates the worst to Super 35 because the astigmatism is affecting the sides of the frame. And if you think about it, with a Super 35 camera, in the exact region where your vintage character will be most prominent, you're not even recording. So far based off my tests, in my opinion, you kind of have to jack up that tuner all the way to 10 and use a pretty fast lens to get an effect because you just need that effect to creep in further into the center of frame to make it to the recorded Super 35 image. So the tuner is built like a tank. Unfortunately, it doesn't lock, but it is dampened basically perfectly. It takes quite a bit of force to change it. So if you lightly bump it, it will not shift completely out of whack. 
Another noteworthy aspect is that you can keep autofocus and stabilization and aperture control. All of that digital information passes through the adapter. That's something that could have been overlooked in a product like this that's geared towards cinema users, and I'm so glad that it was not. Now, the biggest downside for me when using the L3 is that if I'm using the L3, by definition, I can't also be using the speed booster. Now with the C70, I'm pretty much always using the speed booster because it allows me to expose in low light with that extra stop of light. It allows me to get that full frame look with shallower depth of field, and it allows me to get wider with a much wider field of view, especially on my zoom lenses. A 24 on a Super 35 sensor isn't nearly as useful to me as a 24 on a full frame. So unfortunately you cannot stack RF to EF adapters. So this isn't really a knock on the L3, but as a C70 user, I just have to point out that in the real world, I'm more often going to need the speed booster or just want the speed booster more so than I'm going to want these characteristics. And to piggyback off that point, there is a slight crop on the L3 as well. I think I remember first hearing that there was like a 3% or something around that crop on the tuners. And I thought, oh yeah, no big deal. That's, that's tiny. But at the same time, I felt it every time I switched from the standard adapter, not even the speed booster, the standard pass-through adapter, which I was doing some tests on, to the L3. So it takes that image that's already so much more constrained in Super 35 compared to my normal full frame with the focal reducer, and then it makes it even a little bit tighter still. Even though it's minor, it's another thing to be aware of. Also, it took me a few months to realize this, but the name is Modulate. The Modulate lets you modulate your amount of vintage character. That pun went right over my head. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. Um, I don't get to keep these adapters. Module 8 just lent me the demo units for the better part of a week so I could do these tests and make this video. And my conclusion is that I might buy one because I do really like what the astigmatism does specifically in wide shots that would otherwise be completely flat. However, I don't think I would actually use it that often because there are just so many situations in which I would want to use the speed booster when I need to get wider or expose in low light, etc. And although the L3 is my favorite tuner from Module 8's current lineup, it is less appealing to pair it with the C70 because the astigmatism doesn't really make its way too far into the Super 35 image. It's designed for full frame, and that leads you to basically shooting wide open on fast lenses to get these effects. However, if Canon does release a full frame RF cinema camera, which is it's kind of crazy that they haven't yet, with the exception of the R5C, but if they do end up making a full frame C70 or something in that vein, and I did decide to upgrade, then the L3 would probably be one of the first accessories I would purchase because I would not have to forego that full frame advantage to use it. And I've learned enough to be cautiously optimistic about them in my future workflows.